What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s. When I covered the topic of the Istio Ingress Gateway, I spoke about the importance of having a single point of entry into your cluster and then securely redirecting traffic to the relevant upstream destinations. But this approach won't suit every single use case. There are occasions where it makes more sense to have multiple gateways that serve different purposes. Let's consider a multi-tenant cluster used by different teams, and each one is responsible for its own application. These applications may very well have different requirements. Let's say that team A has an application that has to be highly performant. Meanwhile, team B doesn't have as much of a priority on performance, but it does consist of a large number of microservices and prioritizes the availability of those services. And lastly, we have team C. And Team C has an application with very specific security requirements. As you would expect, the proxies for each of the services should have the appropriate configurations applied to them. However, as the list of configurations grows, Istio's performance will be impacted in a negative way and it will require some fine tuning to improve the performance. One of the components that will take a hit from all these configurations is the Istio Ingress Gateway. The Ingress Gateway is just another Envoy proxy, except it's not coupled to an application like the sidecar proxies are. But because it's a proxy like the sidecars in the mesh, it has to be aware of all the proxies along with their respective configurations. In some scenarios, this can be too much for a single gateway, and as I mentioned, there can easily be degraded performance. So instead, you can have multiple gateways, whether that's a one-to-one -one relationship between a gateway and an application, or a one-to-many relationship between a gateway and a subset of applications. Either way, the goal is to reduce the strain on a single one in certain scenarios. In addition to that, you can configure the gateway to only care about the virtual services that use it. And when this is enabled on the gateway, all of the sidecar proxy configurations in the mesh are filtered down to only the ones that the gateway should know about. And the last thing I want to mention about having multiple gateways is the cost implication in cloud environments. The gateways that you create will in turn expose a load balancer in your cloud environment. And the more of these that you have, the more costly it will be to run with this particular model. All right, now let's take a look at an example. All right, before I show you the results of implementing multiple gateways, I'm going to walk you through the source code. To customize my Istio configurations, I'm going to use the Istio operator. Now, if you've got Istio CTL installed on your machine, then you can simply run the Istio CTL operator init command in the terminal to get Istio operator running on your Kubernetes cluster. Now, as you can see over here, I have an Istio operator custom resource, and this is the main configuration file that I'll be using to customize Istio. And as you can see over here, mine is called Istio Control Plane, and it's going to be in the Istio system namespace. Just bear in mind, this is an arbitrary value, so you can name it something else. I'm using the demo profile, and under values, you'll notice that I am disabling the auto scaling capabilities of the Istio Ingress Gateway. That won't be needed because I am disabling it altogether. And then I want to draw your attention to the components section and specifically under ingress gateways. And you'll see that this is an array and there are three different properties. The first one is the Istio ingress gateway, which I am disabling. And the second one is the e-commerce ingress gateway, which I'm creating and will be used as the entry point for the e-commerce application. And it is going to reside inside the e-commerce namespace. As you can see, it is enabled and I have attached a specific label to it, Istio e-commerce ingress gateway. Similarly, I have the express ingress gateway, which will be for a separate application and it's inside the default namespace. And similarly, it has a label attached to it, but in this case, it's Istio express ingress gateway. Now, these labels are very important because when you create gateway resources, you are, you are going to attach them to specific ingress gateways. And that happens using the selector property on the gateway resource, and they will be selecting specific ingress gateways based on the labels that are attached to them. It works very similar to services and pods. I'm going to scroll up over here because I want to draw your attention to this. The last thing that I want to do is to configure these gateways to modify them so that they only care about the virtual services attached to them. 
As I mentioned previously, by default, the gateway proxies are made aware of all the sidecar proxies in the mesh along with their respective configurations. And this adds a necessary configuration load to gateway proxies. So we basically wanna filter this information down so that the gateways are only concerned with the proxies that they send traffic to. This will in turn optimize performance. So to carry out this filtering process, we enable the pilot filter gateway cluster config environment variable. As you can see, I'm setting it to true. If you take a look at the documentation, you'll see that it reads, if enabled, pilot will send only clusters that referenced in gateway virtual services attached to the gateway. For some, this might be a little bit confusing because of the word clusters. Clusters in the context of Envoy refer to the specific upstream services that receive routed traffic. So this is essentially saying that this feature flag will make sure that the gateway only gets information about the upstream services that it will be routing traffic to. All right, so I'm gonna move a little bit faster with the other resources. In, in my source code. And the reason for that is because I've already covered the ingress gateway and virtual services in terms of how they work in a separate video. And you can find a link to that in the description below if you wanna dive deeper on understanding what their specific functions are and how they work in the routing process and getting traffic into your service mesh. So over here is one of my gateway resources. I've got the e-commerce gateway and I also have the express gateway. And you will notice that under the spec section, I have the selector property, which I was referring to earlier, and it's referencing the appropriate ingress gateway based on the label that is attached to the e-commerce gateway. So that's very important. And similarly, the express gateway is also attached to the appropriate ingress gateway. So those are things that you need to be aware of when you're working when you're creating a gateway resource and making sure that it's attached to the appropriate ingress gateway in Istio. Next up are just the virtual services. And remember virtual services are components that you use to configure your proxies for routing traffic to the appropriate upstream services. And for the e-commerce application, I have three virtual services. And these are for a GraphQL application, an orders application, and a products application. Now, once again, I'm not gonna dive too deep into this because I covered these particular components with the same example application in that other video that I was referring to earlier. And so you can definitely check that out if you wanna have a better understanding of this. This is just so you're aware of the entire plane and understand the different components involved in what I am actually demonstrating. And so these are the virtual services for these respective applications in the e-commerce um, example app, and they are fulfilling the function of routing traffic. Okay, and very important, you'll see that for each virtual service, it, they are attached to a specific gateway. In this case, it is attached to the e-commerce gateway. Remember, this is exactly what I was showing you just a few seconds ago. And this is important because if you think back to that filtering process that we enabled, that means that our e-commerce gateway is only going to receive information and configuration related to these specific virtual services, which minimizes its, its load so that it can perform better. And that's the exact same case for the express gateway as well. And so the express gateway only has a single virtual service attached to it because it's just one application. And um, this is going to fulfill the same role of routing traffic to the relevant upstream service. Great, so the last thing to do now is to show you this in action. I have already deployed each of these resources to my cluster. I'm gonna scroll down slightly here and I just wanna show you these components. So you can see over here in the default namespace, I have, whoop, that's the wrong one. Let's go up by one. The express ingress gateway is up and running over there. If I scroll down slightly, you'll see the e-commerce ingress gateway pod is also running in the e-commerce namespace. And now I'm gonna show you inside the services section that the creation of these ingress gateways also spawns up specific um, load balancers that will then proxy the traffic to the relevant components. And over here is our express ingress gateway, which has created 
uh, an external load balancer in my cloud environment. And it's the same case for the e-commerce ingress gateway. Let's quickly take a look at the gateway components. And you can see over there, there's our express gateway and our e-commerce gateway. I'm just gonna describe one of them so we can see more details about that. And you'll see it, it just reflects what I showed you in the specific configuration file. Lastly is our virtual services. And there's the express virtual service, which is managing routing for the express application. And we've got three other virtual services related to the e-commerce application. And each one of them is routing traffic to the appropriate upstream service for those different applications. Okay, so everything's running as expected. Lastly, um, in my browser over here, I am sending requests to the appropriate endpoints. So this is the specific URL for the e-commerce ingress gateway, and it is exposing this GraphQL application, and the GraphQL application is in turn proxying traffic or sending requests to the respective applications, which is orders and products. So you can see that this is working as expected. So I just have a simple query over here and I can get orders and the relevant information as well as products as well. So this is just so you can see that it is working as expected. So that's this is for our e-commerce gateway. And then over here, and I've just um, zoomed in so you can see this clearly. Uh, this is for the Express Node.js application. So we've created multiple gateways and um, everything is working as expected. And I also showed you how you can configure your gateways to be able to operate uh, in a more performant way by minimizing what they are concerned about in terms of the virtual services. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any feedback, please provide it in the comment section below and stay tuned for more.